So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and I'll teach you how to play Whistle Stop by Bezier Games, a game of competing fledgling railroad companies who are working to build the railroads and have the most share and fame at the end of it. You'll start setting up the game by clipping the main game board together like so. Then on the turn track here, find the whistle space and place one whistle token per player. Then find the coal space for the number of players you have, which is five, four, three or two. And then place two coal for each player on that space. And then every space below that. Place the remaining coal and whistle tokens in piles next to the board long piles for your common resources and for your rare resources. Then also create a pile of your gold tokens and you'll need to make sure that these are all flipped so that they're face down and then you shuffle them all up so that you don't know what values are where. You'll then need to create separate stacks for each of the different colours of shares so that they go from six at the bottom to one on the top. Then shuffle up all these upgrade cards here and randomly pick out two more than the number of players. The rest you'll return to the box. The ones you've picked out you'll flip face up and place near the game board. Next shuffle up all the hex tiles that have this dark green background and then place one in each of these spaces along the leftmost side of the board and you'll place these so that their tracks point towards the rest of the board. Then the remaining tiles you'll return to the box. We then want to fill this fourth column from the right which is roughly the middle of the board. To do this you'll start by separating out your special tiles. So you've got ten of these town tiles, two trading posts, two whistle factories, two coal yards, then a coal mine and a general store. Take a coal yard and a trading post and then two random city tiles. Then take your gold mine, your general store and your whistle factories, shuffle these up and add one to the tiles that you've just taken aside. Then all the rest of the special tiles you can put away for now. You'll need them again in a minute. First what you need to do is get all of the ordinary tiles which have the same as the special tiles, the light green back but they don't have any large hexes on. Instead, they've just got the railways and these little stops on. Some of them might not have any stops on, such as this one here. You'll shuffle all these up, and then you'll add three random ones to the special tiles that you've just picked out. You'll then shuffle all of these tiles up, then randomly set them out in this column here. Then from your shuffled up ordinary tiles you'll want to randomly place some along this rightmost edge of the board here. When doing this you need to be careful not to create any closed loops like this whereby the starting track only leads directly to the starting track. Although we have a loop of track here because it ends at a stop that can then take it off elsewhere that is fine. So this one we just need to rotate so that it doesn't cause us any problems. Finally, take all your ordinary tiles and then add in your special tiles that you set aside earlier and shuffle these all together to create one single stack and then reveal three of the tiles. Then randomly pick your first player and have each player pick three tiles from the stack to be their hand of tiles. They'll keep this secret from the other players. However, if in this hand of tiles they only have tiles like this that have no stops, then they will give up their tiles and draw three new ones. The given up tiles will be shuffled into the stack. So in this case they have one that has no stops on, but the other two have stops on so they don't give up their tiles and they keep these hidden from the other players. Each player will also be given a whistle. They'll then need to pick what colour they want to play as and take 
the appropriate player board for that colour. They'll also take the scoring marker, which is placed on the zero space of the score track running around the outside of the board. Three trains of their colour for a five player game, four trains for a four player game, and if you're playing with two or three players, then five trains. Then your first and second players will receive two coal tokens each. If you have a third or a fourth player, they'll each receive an extra token for a total of three coal tokens. And if you have a fifth player, they'll get four coal tokens. The final thing to do when setting up is for players to place their trains on these East Coast stops. You'll start with the player to the right of the first player, who's your last player in the round, and they'll choose one of these spaces to place one of their trains on. Then, in counterclockwise order, each player will place another train, and they can't go on a space that already has a train. Once all players have placed their trains, you're then ready to begin. And you're all set up and ready to go. In order to win the game, you need to have the highest score or fame at the end of the game. And you're going to be tracking this around the edge of the board. The game will end in one of two ways. Either you finish the final round, which is marked by these tokens here as you take these at the start of each round. And when you finish the final round, that would be the end of the game. Or if someone manages to get all of their trains to the far end of the board, then that will become the final round. So say they did it in the round here, that would be the final round, and whoever has the highest score at the end of that round would win. You'll gain fame during the game by going to these towns. And if you move your train onto a town and you're able to spend the required resources, so in this case it would be a blue cube and a grey cube, then you receive the fame noted on the town. You'll also receive a share for that town. And whoever has the most shares of each town at the end of the game will also get 15 points then. If, however, you go to one of these towns and you don't have the required resources, then you will lose points, but you can never go below zero points. These end stops are similar to your towns, except for when you go here, you won't get any shares, but you'll get more points. In this case, you need to give up the resources shown at the top, which is always going to be free cubes. And of course, if you can't, then there is going to be negative points. The other thing that will happen when you go to one of these end stops is you remove your train and you'll place it on one of these spaces along here of your choice that doesn't already have a train on, and you'll take the resources that are shown. The other type of end stop here will also gain you points. But the way these work is these stock markets, when you go here, you'll gain three points for this one for every share that you have, but you then have to discard a share, giving it up so that it won't count towards your end game scoring. However, you still move your train onto one of these spaces as normal. At the end of the game, you'll also gain points for any resources that you have unused, for any gold tokens that you have in front of you, and also for any upgrades that you own at that time. The fame points you get are shown at the top here. Finally, any coal or whistle tokens will also be worth points. And you'll lose points if you have any of the special tiles, which are the ones with the large hexes on, in your hand at the end of the game. The game is played over a series of rounds, and at the start of each round you'll divide the tokens for that round between all players. So it'll either be two coal that you receive, or a whistle. Then, starting with your first player, they are able to perform their actions. On their turn, they're able to spend four tokens, which is coal or whistles. Now, they can spend these in order to perform the abilities of upgrade tiles that they've picked up, or to move their trains. If you spend a coal, and you can track that by placing it along here, then you can move your train forward one stop. So, in this case, I could move this train to this stop here. If you go to one of these little circle stops here, then you'll gain a cube of the colour that you land on. So in this case, I would gain a white. If I'd move this train to here, I would instead gain a blue cube, which I would add to my player area here. And there is space on your player board for 10 cubes, so you can never have more 
than 10 resources at a time. If you'd need to take resources and it would take you over 10, you can freely choose which ones to keep and which ones to discard. And I can spend tokens up to four times. So I could use another coal and then move, say, to there and get a brown. The other option you have is to use a whistle as one of your tokens. A whistle will allow you to move backwards. You see, with the coal, you can only ever move either in the same column that you're in or to a column to the left. If you want to move to the right, so say I spent a whistle, I could go one, two, back this way. So moving back towards the right here. And then of course landing there I would gain a white cube. If moving you would end up, so say I spent another coal, you would end up moving into one of your other trains. What you instead do is you jump past it. So for one coal I can actually move two stops by leapfrogging my own train. However if it was another player's train there I can't go past it unless I use a whistle because the other thing a whistle will allow you to do other than move backwards is it will allow you to jump a space so you can move two spaces if however there was a train there I couldn't choose to jump over both of these and land there using a whistle So let's say I'm there and I'm using this coal and I want to go off this way because this leads off over here. But there's no actual tile here to move on to. That's where the tiles in my hand come into play. So I'd pick one of these tiles and I would choose to put it into play. Now I could put one with a stop on and I would go onto that stop. But what I could do is place one that goes like this. So there's no stop on that tile, so I go past and I keep on going. And I then choose another tile to place. And I could do the same again and place one that doesn't have a stop. And I would keep on going like this. And it's possible that you could use all three of your tiles. You must always ensure that you have at least one tile with a stop on. Either one of the small stops or one of the big special stops, the hexes here. It's important to note that with these big hex ones, multiple people can go on there. So with me being there, another player could still come in to this stop. It's not the same as with the little circle ones. This also means that I can't now leapfrog over myself at that stop because it can take multiple trains. The other thing you're able to do on your turn, as well as spending four tokens, is to spend four resources and what you're spending those resources on is the upgrade tiles that are beside the board and the cost of these is given at the top next to the victory points you get if you have it at the end of the game so this would be two white two of any basics two gray and two of any basics you're simply use the cube spent so let's go two basics and you keep track of them here and again you can only spend four resources so you'll be able to buy a maximum of two upgrades in a turn and this would say go to there if another player had already bought an upgrade that I wanted I can still buy that upgrade but I have to give them a rare resource so that's one of the blue green or red resources and that doesn't count as one of my resources spent, that simply goes to them. In the same way, I spoke earlier about visiting towns and spending resources. When you spend resources to visit a town, they do not count as your spent resources here. They are instead just returned immediately to the supply. This spending of resources only applies to upgrades. So this is why it's important that you don't gain the points immediately when you gain the upgrade because you'll be able to buy them from other players and people will be able to buy them from you. Also note that the resources you spend for the cost of the upgrade, so this one I couldn't actually have bought because it was too white, but this one I could have. If someone was buying that off me, I don't gain 
the two basic resources. I only gain the rare one. I don't gain the common ones. Once a player has finished their turn, they'll return any coal or tokens, so for the whistle as well, and any resources cubes to the supply, and then they will draw back up to a hand of free tiles. When drawing up to free tiles, you'll either choose to take from those visible or from the top of the stack. If you are taking multiple tiles and you choose to take one from the top of the stack, you can't look at it before deciding what else to then take. Also, if you take one from those that were visible, it's not refilled until the end of your turn. So if we go for these, a new tile would then come out. Once you've done this, play then passes to the next person in clockwise order until every player has taken a turn and then it is the end of the round. And you'll keep playing rounds this way until the game ends, either because someone has managed to get all of their trains to the end of the track, meaning that you finish that round, or it's the final round. Once you have finished your final round, you then need to do end game scoring. So as well as the fame that you've gained during the game, you'll now score fame for the shares that you have. Each colour of share is calculated separately. Whoever has the most shares of each colour will gain 15 fame. If there's any ties, so say I had these two black shares here, but another player had these two black shares, whoever has the single lowest share is the person who wins the tie. So in this case, although I have share total of six compared to five, I still win because my lowest share is the one compared to their two. So I would gain 15 points for that as well. You'll then also add on any points for any of these upgrades that you have, and they're shown here. Gold, you'll gain the points as printed on the back of the token. You'll then also gain one point for each of the common resources that you have and three points for each of the rare resources that you have. Each pair of tokens you have, you'll gain an additional point for. So in this case, I have three tokens, so I would only gain one point because you round down. Then once you've done this, you will minus points for any of these special tiles still in hand. So any with the big hex on, and you'll lose 10 points for each one of those that you have in your hand. And that's the game. Whoever has the most fame at that point is the winner. So finally, I just want to cover what each of these special tiles does. So we've gone through the towns and how they work. There's also this coal yard. When you move a train to the coal yard, you'll immediately take two coal tokens. When you go on to the general store, you'll immediately take either one common resource or one rare resource of your choice. Then the trading post here will allow you to do two trades. You can either trade a common resource for two coal or a whistle or a different common resource, or you can trade any one rare resource for two common resources or a different rare resource. Landing on the gold mine, you'll take a random gold token. You'll get to look at this, but not show the other players what the score on it is. And this can range from three to five fame. The final tile is the whistle factory. And when you land here, you'll take a whistle token. The final thing to be aware of is what all the upgrades you're playing with that game do. And there are quite a few of these all listed in the manual, so I'll let you find out for yourself what they do. And that is how you play Whistle Stop by Bezier Games. I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do give it a like, a share, a comment. And as always, please do check out the rest of my videos. And thanks for watching, and bye for now.